Price clean me up. Price clean me up. I ain't, ain't in a feeling brand new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Price clean me Welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, and that's the topic of the church. Matter of fact, if you're watching right now, go on and drop a church emoji in the live chat. Go on and put, go on and put your church where you attend your local fellowship in the chat. But without further ado, I'm going to be having a good friend of the show He's no stranger. He is no stranger here. Let's let's introduce my man, my friend, Mr. Dear Woke Christian. Yes! Randy Watson! <laughs> that boy is good. <laughs> it went good. What's king, going on, man? The king of sound effects. Yes, yes. man. Let me tell you, thank you so much, Chris, for having me, man. This is going to be fun. Hey, it's Go good on. Good to have you on. Good to have you on. Yes, so. I'm good. So, um, but yeah, man, we want to talk about the, the doctrine of the local church, right? And so... <laughs> You know, I brought you on. So why don't you tell people how to, how you found your local church? Tell them where you attend. Okay, great. That's a great question. So me and my family attend Smyrna Presbyterian here in Smyrna, Georgia. And when we left purpose-driven church or tractional church, seeker-sensitive, I want to call it, we were looking for a place to land. And I had already started the journey of learning about um, sound biblical preaching and this ver- verse line upon line type of preaching style. So long story short, my daughters were attending a private school and my wife and I were in a church that we agreed on. And I said, well, hey, you know, the girls go to this. Why don't we go check that out? And we we committed to that. Came to the church and story long short, he was preaching verse upon verse. This, this, this going through the book of Mark type of preaching. And I was like, wow, this is what I mean on my YouTube channels. This is what I've seen on online sermons. This actually exists in real time. And so we, um, we, let's just say it was on Mark chapter five, eight through 13. So the next two weeks, we kind of, we, we weren't able to, we had checked out some other churches and I said, you know what, I'm going back to Smyrna Press. So on the third day back, it is on Mark chapter five, verse 30 through 30. And like, he did not miss a beat. He went through the entire book of Mark Yo, that is amazing. The other thing that really stood out to me was the fact that I'm there. So there's no uh, happy, slappy church type of music or anything of that nature. It's just hymns. And it's it's from a Psalter, and a hymnal. And the focus is on the congregation singing rather than the congregation observing five or, or eight people on the stage performing. Everybody is unto the Lord. And that's what ultimately drew us and brought us Smyrna Press. We can go into... You know the the pastors being the boy. We could talk about the um, 
the overall worship experience. We can talk about all that, but those are two main reasons that brought me to Smyrna Press. What yeah, so I I got joined to my church here, the Grace Community Church, uh, probably ten over a little over ten years now. Uh, crazy being being a church for a decade, um, but absolutely, I I I joined because so this is just God's providence. I don't recommend this, but I was leading a Bible study, right? I didn't have as high a view of a, a local church as I do now. If I could go back in time, right, uh, I would definitely be more active in my search. But nevertheless, God um, God still uses the foolish things, right? Uh, so I was leading Bible study, leading okay, Bible okay. study, and some girl was like, hey, that was coming. She was like, you sound, you sound like... Um, you sound like my pastor, <laughs> right? And so I was like, okay, I I gotta I gotta I gotta meet this guy. I gotta meet this church. And so that's how I kind of got joined to the church that I'm at now. And so uh, with that said, let's get into our our word of the day, dear dear world Christian. What is our word of the day? Our word of the day is ecclesiology, and yeah. it is the study of the church. Yep. And what does that mean? It means the word ecclesiology comes from the two Greek words meaning assembly and word and to mean the study of the church. The church is the assembly of believers who belong to God, universal church and local church. That's right. And and, and I'm, I want to apologize to everyone. People saying my voice sounds high pitch. I, I have no clue why that is the case. So if you guys could just, just spare me today and just, you know, uh, you know, just let's ignore that today. But We'll get that figured out in the future. But let's talk about this distinction between the universal church and the local church. Um, the universal church is, is something, uh, Jason, that um, I've seen many people more willing to accept. Would you agree with this? That many people are like, hey, they're hoorah for the universal church. Would you agree? No, I agree with you. And I also think that many people just think of a lot of people that I've run into don't actually think about the church of the universal church, but they'll accept the the premise of it, but they don't actually articulate it clearly, if that makes sense. Think about the fact that uh, you and I are members of the church that 50 years ago, 150 years ago, 350 years ago, actually think about that. The fact that your little church that you're a part of, part of the bigger universal church, but most of them would not argue with that, but they actually have not actually articulated that. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. Uh, but we want to talk about the local church and what is the local church? The local church, I would argue, is the body of believers who gather together under the name of the Lord. Right? Uh, it's the it's the localized believers where we meet together. You see that in Hebrews ten twenty five, First uh, Corinthians talks about the local church. Uh, you know, it assumes, matter of fact, you already are meeting together. It says when you meet together, right? And yeah. then X X Y Z, right? Uh, so. Um, yeah, the local church is something that I think many people, a matter of fact, I know many people do not have a high view of. Um, I've even heard people talk about, you maybe you've heard phrases like this, uh, is this, I am the church. I right? am the church. <laughs> what do you think about phrases like that? It, it, it shows a lack of understanding. First of all, what the purpose of the local church is and the universal, the visible as well as the invisible church. I think the idea that you are the church is a silly idea just akin to a toe saying, I am the body, or a hair follicle saying, I am. That doesn't, you know, I don't have any hair follicles, but <laughs> it's silly. It's dumb that. So we are a part of a, we play a role in much bigger tapestry. And and not only a tap in the, in the modern day, but even into the past and, of course, into this as well. So I yeah. think it, it shows that they don't understand what church is, in my opinion. Very true. So we want to provide some resources. Uh, and since my voice is high, if you don't mind kind of taking over a little bit as far as speaking and I'll kind of do some of the controls, what we'll Not do here, we'll, what we'll do here is show people how to find a local church. So what is this website so, that we have here? Um, and we'll, these links will be down in the description as well. Mm -hmm. So this is first and a great church finding website. So what I would do is, or what you could do, is you can go to, as I'm waiting for it to catch up on my screen here, so I can see a bit closer. Um, you would go to Founders, and you can search by um, church name, you can search by address, or you can search by zip code. And you can put that information in, plug it in, and you'll find different churches. And, and these are Bible-believing churches near you, so they're not going to be 
just the run of the mill storefront that I started last Tuesday. But these are going to be churches that are have have a long history. That most part, founders has vetted, and you can trust that they are at least a starting place. And let me also just add this little caveat: any you find here should still be looked at and still be given the once over. You know, you shouldn't just say, "Oh, it's on," or "Oh, I found it on nine marks." It's a okay. Right. Any, so you know, just assume that this is a good starting place. Be akin to searching via Google. You wouldn't just assume every place on Google is is a good place to go to. So you would vet, and I would do the same thing here. Right. I found. So let's do this. Let's. How about we give people a real live what this looks like in person view. So what 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 city should we look up? You know, let's let's put this in practice. <sighs> How about this one? Let's get some comments in the chat real quick. Where, um, where are you from? Let's, let's, if you're looking for a yeah, church, right. how about if you're a church, how about you just chime in real quick and, um, yeah. Um, Mike, I see that you're talking master seminary church finder. I think we have that on there as well. We have, yes, that's in the option. description. Yeah. It's in the um, description. So definitely this is not positive, uh, review by any means. So we definitely want to encourage <laughs> Frisco, Texas. I'm only laughing because Chris knows why I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what? A... Oh wow. Oh hey, wow. This is this is good. But hold on, hold on. So the, I think this is good to share too. The yeah. reason why we're doing this um, is because um, we both have been getting a lot of emails of people asking, um, "How does one uh, find a good local church?" Right, okay. and. I think we've been getting bombarded by these emails. Not that I think this is a bad thing. And so by the way, we're going to take questions at the end. And so please save your questions. We'll get to that in a second. But we wanted to do this live to show people, hey, how do we um, how do we find people a good local solid church and things to look for? And so let's do that. Let's let's take one of these cities. Let's take Tampa. I'm gonna go. Okay, you going to Tampa? Yeah, okay, let's go cool. Tampa. Let's go Tampa. Tampa. It's, yeah, it's he, warm there. he put it twice, right? So yeah. All right. So you you search Tampa. You scroll down. And uh, uh, okay, and a few churches will pop up, right? So, um, you know, hey, you can change the parameters, right? But this is twenty results that popped up just from using uh, Tampa. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's click on one of these. All right, and they kind of give you a description of the church. Yep. Yep. Some are, of course. I think founders are going to be all Baptist churches. Mm hmm. Okay. No problem there. There we go. And Perfect. so look, and, and you can go on the website. And what are some things we recommend recommend while looking on some of these websites? Uh, All right. What are so, some things you would recommend? So for me, I start out trying to whittle down. So the first thing I do is if I go to a church site, I go to their about us or their leaders or of that nature. So um, if you can go to their their leaders or their pastors, and I know People don't like this necessarily, but I start off immediately. Do they have male pastors or do they have associate pastors that are co-pastor, husband and wife teams or anything of that nature? Um, female deacons, female elders, um, anything like I usually use that as a good barometer. I'm not going to mess with you. Um, who are Brownie and Julie? Uh, it, it doesn't seem like. Say, yeah. Yeah. All right. Hmm. I'm going to. Yeah. It doesn't really say. Yeah. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, is that what it's. Oh, my producer said. Oh, she teaches. Oh, she teaches twin school. Uh, okay. I think she'll be okay. They, cut, they cut the mustard. They passed the mustard so far. Yeah. yeah. All right. All okay. Right. So, so, so far. So far. Look, yeah. So far, I would look at their leadership structure. So, mm -hmm. I'm trying to cut people out. So, at the they, they're rolling. So next thing oh, I they, would they, do. They, the pastor right here. Okay. There yeah. we go. So the next thing I would do is look at what they actually believe. If they have a statement of faith. And I'm looking to see a robust statement of faith. Or is it just something that would be akin to a cut and paste, cookie cutter, boilerplate faith? So they say what they believe about scripture, about God. I like it. What they believe about man. Of course. Look at this. Okay. Pretty robust. God's purpose of grace and the church. Okay, they actually have a, a um, statement about the church, which is kind of cool. How serendipitous can think about that? All right. So so far, I'm looking at their leadership, male leadership. So far, um, 
their statement of faith looks robust, looks filled out. It's not just a bunch of short views. It looks like they've written something that they thought about. Again, I don't know. I think so far, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, not bad, right? Yeah, not bad. Um, I mean, they got a whole bunch of extra ones, okay? Mm-hmm. For the bottom of the thing. Okay, there we go. They, what they're I, still going. What I generally try to do is find some kind of looking at their sermon. Oh, well, I mean, look at this. Look, look at their uh, mission statement. Yeah, that's something good. Look, look okay, at this. So, you see what I have highlighted? Um... Might take a little in on, on your end, but uh, all of my confidence monitors, I'm I'm actually waiting for it. Um, it to YouTube, but oh, okay. Expository. God, there we go. So we know that this is going to be some online preaching. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, at this moment, if I had like a card, I'd be giving them a pretty decent rating right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like the fact that they they look like they have uh, good leaders. They have a decent. A very robust, filled out statement of faith. Their mission statement seems to be something that is not just uh, thought about on the way um, to church, written out on a napkin. So as you were about to say, you would want to get into some of their sermons. I agree to. Yeah, I, I don't see any place that is. Um, So that would what, be what? my only critique. I would want, you know, I want to hear some of the sermons before I visit there. But just from the website alone. Not bad. Not so, bad at all. Okay. If I were in this situation and this church has checked all those boxes and they don't have their sermons on their actual website, I'm just going to do a search on YouTube. I'm going to give them a chance because I don't think our church has their sermons on. My church doesn't have their sermons on their website. No sermon mm -hmm. audio and they're on YouTube. So I, I can, I can, add. so okay. there's a lot, there's a bandwidth issue as we do um, putting videos on your actual website so i'm not mad about that that was cool gotcha. so let's, um let's look at another um church search so we we'll do another site and let's see uh there was somebody hey i'm feeling kind of froggy there's somebody who said that they were on their uk I, I don't even know how to search for the uk right there yeah i wouldn't even know how to let's do it come on let's do it you can we try it yeah just type in united kingdom i want to learn now, of course, I want to learn and make you do it. So there's that, too. <laughs> I, I can just dip out and say, what's Chris doing? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, it's it's very, I mean, that's very vast, right? Wow. So it's it's like putting the United States. You have to be more specific than that. You know what I mean? Well, she said Great Britain. So is that does that make it a little bit better? Don't tell nobody. I don't know where. I am i don't have a uh, lot of. Uh, me neither. Out. It's too, yeah, uh, that's, that's too big, too. It is? Okay. Yeah. I want to, well, I, I have to do some search. Um, yeah, Great so Britain. I would just tell this person put their someone said London. Okay, try London. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go to Grace Life London. London, Lund London Bridge Presbyterian. That's right. Oh, it's Presbyterian. No, I'm nah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the pastors. Okay. We're... This this is always the dangerous section, right? Right. So I always start there. Okay. We just get the way danger. Okay. All men. First, first check. You know, sometimes you can look at their oh, background too, where they graduated. And they got some diversity. Uh oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, is not a prerequisite. Do not look at that at all. So it doesn't matter. Correct. Uh, let's see. Okay. So, so I mean, Burnmouth. 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 Got it. Okay. Okay. Not, not bad. And if by any chance, if, I mean, we're, we're doing the fly. So I really do appreciate everybody's patience. That's right. So if all of the, thank you so much to the moderators for dropping the links in the chat, um, like nine marks. Now I, I saw somebody earlier mm -hmm. had found, feel free if um, we're just kind of scanning through to kind of show you the hope is that this will equip you and give you enough, at least get yourself um, out there looking. So at least, you know, coming Sunday, this coming Lord's day, you know you have somewhere that you can go so for this not to be an exhaustive search by any means um, all right so where, this was a city given by someone in the chat in the uk uh yeah. bournemouth i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly bournemouth bournemouth okay yeah my producer is saying bournemouth he's, okay. he's a snob he's, a, he's an english snob <laughs> let's see 
Okay, well, all all Let's... male leaders. Okay, I like it so far. Let's see. Uh, let's look at their doctrinal Great. distinctives. Hey, oh, oh. <laughs> hey, oh, wow, hey, oh, you got me there, right? Good God. <laughs> Wow. I, I would visit. They're, they're not playing games. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, hell, oh, hey. We'll, we have to see how, you know. Yeah, what does that mean in there? Yeah, in there a little bit more. Well, but I think, yeah, because it's, it's not specific on like what all that means, just to, the spirit still continuing. Right. So, like I said, I, I mean, compliment, complimentarian. Yeah. Elder led. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll check it out. So, so real quick, if you're not familiar, um, there's a couple of things they mentioned here, like elderly, the way that the church is governed. So you know that it's it's not a it's not a top down, like the pastor is just the, the guy running the ship, mm -hmm. everybody else following. You know that your elders are the ones that are leading the church and your pastor is more than likely a, an elder or an, at best, at best, he is an elder or he's, he is um submitted to the eldership so the past go out and buy a brand new car and and with with the ties and offer that, those kind of things like that so that's always good because that's part of a lot of us see here in the united states so um that is dope yeah someone mentioned another city okay let's... In, in in your state uh savannah come on yeah come on. so hey i'm always gonna go to the first one and like you said, we're gonna we're gonna trust our. Oh, oh, hold up, hold up. I accidentally clicked out. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, uh -huh. Sorry about that. I wouldn't mind finding one that does a good example, a good yeah, mission, good doctrinal statement. We might need to go to, <laughs> we might need to go to Transformation Church, <laughs> but like a, a less than like a more of a boilerplate. Uh, what what we mean by this like a boilerplate? cut and paste a lot of people call it um uh file doctrinal statement uh, right build it out but it's not really applied in the church environment but um what you got we'll we'll, we'll do a um a church. bad one in a second oh yeah for sure okay uh leadership right yeah okay mike mike and his wife ray look at that nice right like it so far all right um uh... No co-pastors, okay. Yeah, yeah. And they got their statement of faith. Very nice, filled out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like they they just say, look, we 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 adhere to the Westminster Confession, right? Yeah. So, like right? me, yeah. Cool with that. Um, a lot of kids. See. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, they got a lot. So sermons. Oh, so they do have sermons there. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So they have like their sermons that. on audio. Okay. They yeah, brought yeah. in this link. Perfect, perfect. So this is a great and just to give you a chance to hear their sermons. It's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. But if a church is putting their sermons on sermon audio, generally speaking, a little bit more docs, a little bit more sound, then you're not gonna see elevation on sermon audio. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a guarantee, but you're you do have a better chance is that fair chris yeah uh, yeah a lot more fair uh again there's bad church and audio but because they have to pay to be on there and you don't have to pay to be you probably not see you know a mike todd or um david hughes or somebody like that on sermon audio speaking of and uh hold on wait wait is this it no this is this isn't it hold on Okay, I, I think I know what I did wrong. Uh, let's see. You, you picked your own transformation, another transformation. <laughs> well, that's what it, oh, okay. It's transform, right? It trans, it's in the name, sorry. <laughs> All right, here it is. All right, so, yeah, so, okay, so this, this yeah, is the infamous Mike Todd's church, go ahead. Right. Yeah, that's it. So show the people some of the reasons why this is no, no good. All right, so. Uh, I always start with show me your leadership. So start Damn. right there. Stop right there. Uh, Mike Todd is, first of all, the first problem is Mike Todd is a pastor there. <laughs> but, um, his, his wife is co pastor. Mm -hmm. um, rounding out the bases are 
two of like there are no men actually in predominant in, at least on the first line the first people in there are women and then we got a, a fashionista so that right there is going to be problematic to me um yeah and, i mean starting out with leadership we already see that they already have some very suspect leadership decisions but it actually gets worse go ahead and look at the um what they believe or their um statement of faith what is it under yeah let's see uh i think it's on their cultural code or that's what it is no 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 here it is okay this is what i what i call um was this this con this is what i call basically boilerplate belief statements um i guarantee you, i'm not being funny you could probably cut and paste this and store it and you'll probably find it on another church's website because mm -hmm. it looks like something that was just chat gbt it was some cut and paste in you know cookie cutter box church statement of faith um and it also when you when you look at it it doesn't i don't know how to say, say this in a way that doesn't sound crass but it, it doesn't seem like it's alive it doesn't seem like it's a document that they're actually it's just literally something i jotted it down look what mike just read in the chat say, say one more time i said look what uh mike just read in the chat matter of fact i'll put it up on here on the screen <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, I've heard that these are very cookie cutter. Wow. <laughs> I was literally just saying that. <laughs> but wow. There's your proof. But yeah. look, look at the uh, two two sections I highlighted there. If you want to look, check that out and read yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah, I'm going to have a problem with the ministry. There's going to be a problem with that. I'm not, I am not of the belief that they are modern apostles, nor are they modern day prophets. Now, people um, keep telling me, hey, Mike Todd is not prosperity gospel. But. Okay. But I mean, see, that's how you know that the statement of faith is just something that they wrote and they just put it up. Or oh, I'm sorry, as Mike just put, chat GPT just wrote and they just put it up there. Correct. Because they have health and prosperity as one of their mission, one of their core beliefs. So <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't stuff up. Right. I mean, it's not like we're we're just saying that. It literally said page. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely hope this was helpful for people to um you know, how to find a local church, because we get asked all the time, like, hey, how do we find one? And we were hoping this would be helpful. One thing we want to do before uh, we end this is take some questions. I know there are people that have questions. They want to, uh, you know, maybe they want more in-depth uh, understanding on how to find uh, another, a, a good biblical church and things like that. And so ask those questions away while we get into that. Um, how, how long have you been at your church? Um, we've been at my church for seven years. Let me see, big girl. No, eight years. Because my big girl was in. Wow. Don't tell him about it. I can't do math. <laughs> don't tell him about it. I don't want the world. Yeah, because big girl was in. Yeah, so she was in second grade. When she's in, you know, almost almost nine years. Okay. So almost nine years. So. so you know, but huh? you, you got. <laughs> what's wrong? I'll just tease you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was having problems, man. I was having problems. <laughs> hey, I had to play the suspense music for you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Come on yeah. the show, man. You're the, king. You're the king of sound effects. I knew that this man. was going to happen. Man, look. Look. Oh, I, I got so many, man. I mean, look. This, this, we could have gone this way. Prophesy! <laughs> <laughs> don't kill my producer man my producer's not ready for all these jokes they're not ready he, look few people are you're gonna be in trouble <laughs> few people right. are but you know oh, you have the whole thing to activate right that one day. Wh what i don't look for in a church is this <laughs> i don't want a church doing that man oh, you don't want that don't do this either <laughs> we don't do that Come here on. Yeah, we can't we can't do Michael every now and then. We, we we don't do that there. We don't do that. We won't we you know, we don't do that. Uh Jay says so many hold on, put it on the screen. She says so many churches are bad, especially in the cities. Well, 
We have a phrase, don't we? Don't we, uh, Jason? Uh, we do. Let's. What What is that phrase about Atlanta? Oh, Atlanta must be stopped. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> she must be stopped. Or as okay. I call, or as I call her, At Hill. At Hill. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, there are. If you are in a big city, I, I, in my opinion, I, I always look. You just have more that you have to sort through. Mm-hmm. But hopefully the, the websites that we gave you and good recommendations. You have you have a co-worker that attends a good church. So at least you have a hopefully recommendation. But if if you just, you know, plop me down Denver, if you just threw me into Austin, if I just popped up in New York, I would start, you know, vetting the things that what I'm looking for in a church. And I would go through kind of those lists right there. Maybe proximity. Um, if there's a church close by and I have a friend of mine that said, Hey, you, you start with the 10 mile, 10 mile radius, 15, then you go 25, then you go as, as far as you need to go to find a good church. But I think the right. premise needs to be that I should find a good church. I need to be a part of a good church because that's where we're pre- go ahead. Because we have a, a, a ideology, right? That if God is building his church, clearly there are still good churches around. Right. Not every church is going astray. So let's let's deal with that. What are some of the top reasons? I think we dealt with one while we waited questions. By the way, ask questions in the chat. Uh, what are some top reasons you've heard people not go to church? Right. Um, one. Number one, there's no good ones around. Right. That's kind of what's in the thumbnail. There ain't no good can, ones around. Can we uh, let, let's categorize them? Yes. Are we talking about like bona fide legitimate problems with church or I think are just cop outs? Let's, yeah, let's deal with the cop-outs, because I would okay, say I think, there are very few legitimate reasons. Well, like, for example, if I just moved to a town, and sure. I haven't been in, and, you know, get my family together, get all the kind of stuff, I haven't found it for two months. I might say, hey, I haven't found one yet, but I haven't been looking very hard either. Right. So I'm a, I might be a little bit more gracious, but, hey, Sunday, I'm going to come by and pick you and you, you people up, and we'll go to church together and go lunch afterwards, or whatever like that. So I want to make sure you get, but I agree with you. There are no good ones in my area. All churches are scammed. All the pastors want is money. Here's um, a good one. Are... If you can see this, uh, I think a very good cop out. <laughs> not not that it's a good one, but one we hear often. We are the church. We are the church. But Therefore, we are not... I don't need to go to church. Let, let me let me ask Donovan. I know he's not, but Donovan. I think we all that Michael Jordan was definitely an exceptional. Whether you want to say he's the best, whether he's the best that ever existed, whatever. I think we all agree that he was an exceptional basketball player. Can we agree to that? Mm-hmm. But can we would 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 we dare say that he was the <laughs> No, he was not Bulls. He was a part of it, and dare I say a very key and in part of it, but he wasn't the Bulls. Right. Nor is LeBron the Lakers. Right. He is a part of it. So in order, but would would LeBron James be LeBron James if he played against an entire team. No, he wouldn't. He would need a team. So in order for you to be all that you are supposed to be, I, that God brings you into a family so that you can participate, key member of a family, to do what you're supposed to do. Let's hear my- this one. The worship okay. wasn't my style. The worship isn't for you, though. I wasn't feeling it. I need a shotgun. I need a, uh, <laughs> oh, you, a you, shooting. You, you need something? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you know. Um, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Or, I'm sorry. <laughs> the singing and the musical aspect of church can be a part of your search. However, if that is what you are hinging, whether or not, like, let's just say the preaching is fantastic. I don't think outstanding at Smyrna Press. And I've told them, I mean, I mean, it's congregational singing. So it doesn't necessarily, it sounds good in part. It does not sound good on tape. Um, it just doesn't. Because I, I do videos for us. And I'm like, I don't like the way it sounds. But <laughs> it sounds great when you're there. But if, sure, you can say it's great. This is not something, you're, you're a cup of tea. But are you elevating the mute experience above the preaching? Which, by the way, is the intramarky aspect of the service is God's mm-hmm. preaching, God's word. That's so right. if I'm elevating the singing, whether it be you know, a praise band, a nine-piece orchestra, 
congregating, if I'm elevating that above the preaching, I'm, I'm already out of better sorts. Yeah. So you can find something that you enjoy, but it can't oversee, it can't supersede where you, um, the preaching. Because I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm pretty sure that Jamal Bryant's church, they probably have a really good music ministry. Um, um, William Murphy, they probably have a really good singing group of people. It's not honoring at all, Mm-mm. but they probably will outsing us at Smyrna Press day and night. I will put my pastor against that foolishness that William Murphy does every day, every Sunday, never doubt. Right. right. So I, I just make sure we, we keep it in line. That would be my, my pushback there. No. Shout out to my pastor, Pastor Landon. This What's is something on? we hear a lot in maybe our circles, uh, Jason. But but Jason, there isn't any reform churches around, right? I, I can't find a reform no, church. No, no, no. So therefore, if there is not going to be completely reformed, I'm not going. What shall you say to that? I I, I, I disagree with that. I see it. Here's, Granted, here's, I, I'll give you my philosophy. Yeah, I ahead, say you find the best church, even if it doesn't agree with all your theological distinctives, that's not heretical, right? Facts. And you, you plant there and you serve there until God calls you to something else. You know, if he makes it known, you're supposed to be at a better place. But I would rather be at a, a church that wasn't heretical, right? We're not talking heresy, right? Not talking heresy, right? right. Hey, Look, it's a secret sensitive church, but they, at least they preach the gospel. I would rather go there than not to be at a church at all. Right. There's just I mean, too many things that you're not going to be able to. There's going to be skills and talents and, and abilities that you're not going to exercise at home. Like the one another with your family is the same thing that you do Monday through Saturday. There's nothing new. Um, like you're, you're, there's, there, there's grace that they're giving you to, to grow and mature with these people that you're not going to do. If you're only at home and um, not through some tough issues with others around you. So that'd be my two cents. Yeah. This is something we've heard new. The church is whack. I would Man. go to church, but the church is whack. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> okay. First of all, <laughs> check your source. When somebody says something to, like that, that the church is whack, do your, do your, do your due diligence. And double check, make sure the person that is whack actually is bona fide and uh dare I say um authoritative in saying that. You don't want to be chasing after somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about. That's right. I trip it. What if one starts a church instead of joining one? I I I would say this is not the biblical practice. Um the biblical practice is you're right, you're a part of a church, and then if you are starting a church, a church is laying hands on you, sending you out to plant a church. So there is should be no rogue church planners out there. God's Ooh. called me to church, start a church, but you ain't in a church. Right, no, right. sir. How could you expect people to submit to you when you weren't submitting to others, right? Absolutely. And I mean, hey. yeah, the idea, and sadly, we, we, we see this so often. Some like a church, they go start a church. They literally, mm-hmm. they, they self-ordain themselves. Yeah. And, it, and I think that's, that's a horrible look. One of the things that we we get, um, chastised by people, we do mention and we do call out the things within the church. And this is somebody has to say like this is not appropriate, this is not right. Um, you can't have unqualified, disqualified men in your church and be surprised when they go down in the flavoring. So, yeah, you just start on your own is a bad look. I think yeah. you should seek to find a church that you can be submitted to and be a part of. That would be my two. Yeah, as my pastor said, self-appointed elders are not biblical. And I love this comment here. I would move before I decided not to go to church. It's that serious. And to that, I say amen. Or even a phrase I like to use, a church alive is worth the drive. Get in that car. If you got to drive an hour, it is worth it. It is worth it. Let's answer this one. What about churches that use worship from heretical churches like Bethel and Hillsong? I would say this. Oftentimes... That is indicative of something larger at stake there as well, right? Um, Correct. Typically, it's an indicative of the theology of the church. Um, very rarely will you find, very rarely, I'm not saying not at all, very rarely do you see Reformed churches playing uh, the music of Bethel and Hillsong because of the th- theology of Bethel and Hillsong. What do you think about that? Um, 
I, I agree with you, but then also just some the sadly those churches, and I'm using that that word very loosely, Bethel Hill Song, Elevation, Trans, all those that they put out their church product. A lot of the time, the the singing is is more of a, a form of concert and entertainment versus congregational participation, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, they're also not they're, they're kind of not made for congregational participation and made for five people to be up on stage, you know, singing and us watching them. Mm -hmm. Sure, mm -hmm. I nice wait to the music or sing along with them, but it's not truly congregational. So that's one of the problems I feel. But I do agree with you. There is, there is a a much more nefarious problem. And I think if you run across one of those, I do think that's worth having a conversation rather than putting them on blast. Just okay. ask. Because mm -hmm. you'd be surprised. If just say, hey, we, we listen to K-Love, um, the, the spiritual music, inspirational nation. This comes on there and everybody likes it. So we're going to sing in the church for people to like our music. That's problematic, but I can see it could happen. And just maybe have a conversation with them. You might be surprised. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's uh, address this one. Uh, sister's been asking me this question. Sorry for taking long, Jennifer, to get back to you, but I'll answer this now. She says, how does one get back in the presence of God after a season of sin when nothing works, including church, praise and worship, reading and prayer? This is a great question. Um, yeah. I would argue, Jennifer, what is needed is all of those in actual repentance and confession. Um, mm -hmm. the, I mean, we see this with the life of David, right? Um, when when serious sin, right, was committed, what did David need more than anything? Repent, confession, right? Uh, Psalm 51, I believe, is the classic uh, repentance of David chapter. I would encourage you, sister, to read that. And that's what I would encourage, uh, true repentance. Um, and, you know, having brothers and sisters who can walk with you through these through these things. Um, but very, very heart, heartful question. Um, no, I agree. Uh, I jump in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. I would say I would, ref Jennifer, on the gospel. I would take the time to make it a, a practice. Mm -hmm. um, I, I make a lot of noise called Preaching to the Choir by John Svensson. It's a very short book. And he makes the case that we as Christians need to hear the gospel just as much as, as, as a 10-year Christian or a 3-year Christian or a 5-minute Christian. We, we need to hear the gospel just as much as we dead in our sins and trespasses. Mm -hmm. And just, it reminds us this type of situation that what Christ did for us in saving us, why he did it, and then most importantly, most importantly, the assurance that we are in right standing in Christ. So the, the preaching of the gospel should be something that you should be reflecting. And hopefully you're hearing in your church is, mm -hmm. you know, when you receive the Lord's Supper, you know, there's that, that confession of sin. Pastor declares the the um, the assurance of your forgiveness. And then knowing that I can take the Lord's Supper because, not because I've dotted every I across every T, but because Christ has died. Um, I didn't mean to make that rhyme, but you got my point. So that would be something to remember. Just reflect on the gospel and agree with you, Chris. Psalm 51 is a great mm -hmm. uh, meditation verse, but just meditate. What happened in your salvation? and preach the gospel to yourself. Amen. So that's a great answer. Very, very great answer. Um, my producer action. Um, has this been brought to your, your leadership, leadership and elders hmm. and maybe bring that to them so that somebody is keeping, helping you walk alongside and keep you accountable. That's right. Um, you, you're, we're assuming church, you have pastors that have demonstrated their care and consume. So therefore I can come to them and say, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm in the mud. I need to be cleaned up. And I, I broke my ankle. I need some time to mend. But they can keep an eye on you and, and help you as well. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Kate Craig says he goes to his church in the DFW uh, with some of the best worship, but the lead pastor is a woman. It's lacking biblical accuracy. It's like my flesh is fighting the spirit while finding a church. And to that, I would say this. I'm tired of the church. You need to come. Because, Craig, I saw that you were in Frisco. You need to come to Heritage Grace Community Church. Come come fellowship with us over here, you know? You know, we, we get out of the unbiblical church and come to a good church where you will hear good God news. Good God news, brother. Good God <laughs> news. Amen. Amen. Hope, hope to see you soon. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of questions. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what do we got here. Oh, I want to answer this question. What about churches that celebrate Easter? Easter, and I will say this. I wish more churches celebrated the resurrection, which Easter is truly about. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. You need to find more Christians and churches that preach about the resurrection. Uh, you know, funny enough, early, early, early church uh, talked about Easter and it had nothing to do with the Easter bunny. I know many people want to make that about the pagan practice of, you know, all the pagan gods. But Easter originally, early church was about uh, the resurrection. And so I wish more, per more churches brought that out. You know, and so yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I agree one hundred. And with Christmas, the birth of Christ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? Why? And to me, I'm like, okay, sure. We understand the commemoration of holidays. I mean, man is prone to worship. I got. Why not keep bringing back in front of them what they should worship, rather than you know throwing up our hands and say, oh, they're, they're worshiping Easter Bunny or worshiping Santa Claus. No, like bring back to them what it is about. Why not? Is it not worth having a, to to fight for, if you will? Is that not worth it? Come on. Amen. Amen. It says, we're in the rule. Do we have to go once a week? Well, if your church wants to meet more, hey, to by all means. But, you, you know, there, there's this phrase, especially in Acts, where there was a, they met on the first day of the week. And so you do see this weekly gathering, um, even, even in the book of Acts. And so um, you got that in Mark 16, too. Uh, Acts 27, 20, verse 7. Acts, uh, let's see, where else did I see that? Oh, John 20, verse 1. And so there was this meeting place that the uh, that the Christians, especially in light of the resurrection of Christ, chose to meet on the first day of the week and to meet weekly. And so, yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that. No, I agree. I, 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 I agree with you, but I think when people ask that question, I kind of get wonder, like, why are you, why would you not do why we have, I don't want to fight you to make you go to church. Not feel like, hey, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of, on a basis, I want to see, you know, I want to see these people. Why do you not want to do that? And then maybe you should find a church where you do want to be a part of on a regular basis. Is the word Easter in the Bible? No. Jason. Well, no. act, it's, it's actually in the KJV, uh, if people want to be fair. But is the Bible in the Bible, right? What right. we have to we have to get past kind of I would I, I I think these are immature responses to something, right? Um, is the word omnipresent God, Holy One of Israel in the Bible? Well, no, but the concept is there, right? Right, right. right. And so that's what we have to be asking: is the concept in the Bible? And clearly, the resurrection, which Easter is about, is. It is absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Any more questions? No, I don't see any more questions. But man, I've I've been enjoying this. This is. I like talking about the church. I know right? you do. I'm yeah, yeah. I, I, I love talking about the church. Ecclesiology is one of my favorite topics. I, I have a song called The Church. You know what I mean? I love talking about the church, right? Um, and so, yeah, there are problems with churches, but I don't want people to, It's you know, because I, I fear there is an error in our day, right? There are problems in the church, therefore I won't go to church, right? But we don't do that with other things. There's problems with people that actually don't go to gym, but we still go to the gym, Right. And yeah. I would say actively, actively um, be looking for a church the same way. Right. There wasn't no good. There wasn't no good woman around yet. You still was pursuing looking for a bride. <laughs> right. So don't let the your your visual of, man, I don't see any good churches stop you from actually actively looking. Right. Right. Uh, like I said, people are very zealous to look for a good, good house. Right, it's a good car, a good a good bride, but what about God's bride? Right, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's answer this question. What about signing a membership contract? I'm personally okay with it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not as anti. Now, let me say this: you should. I believe I, I I totally affirm church membership. Correct. Um, and I do believe joining a church is very similar, not one to one correlation. So people don't hear me out right to getting married i think many people think of church as like buying a car ah i'll do it and in a few years i'll sell and get another one you know i i think it should be a long life commitment until the lord makes it clear he wants you somewhere else by you know moving um you know the church is going astray in doctrine 
But I think there should be more of a commitment saying, hey, look, I'm staying here until the Lord providentially lets me know I'm not t- supposed to be there. Right, right. You know, but I wouldn't I wouldn't I, I don't like the term contract. Let's use membership covenant. How about that? Yeah. How about a membership covenant? I, I, I like that phrase better uh, because I believe we're at a we're covenanting covenanting together under right the Lord. You know, we, we are in Christ and then we come together as the body of Christ locally. Um, but yeah, and, amen. Amen, my brother. I, and I, I kind of know why he's saying that. <laughs> uh, churches are doing contracts now. Uh, a lot of them here in Atlanta. So oh, okay. a lot of them do ask you to sign and be a, a, a contract because one of those is, what in the world? I have no clock. clue what that was. <laughs> so, we have uh, um, reactions are on. Oh, because oh, because a thumbs up came up earlier on you. I was like, what is that about? It, it picked up my thumb. Look, yeah, see? There it is. you do like it, this. It like, I don't have it on my phone or anything. You turn, <laughs> producer just turned it off. Thanks, Devin. I, <laughs> I'm over here just looking crazy. But um, yeah, they, they do uh, have you sign a contract to buy, you know, uh, down on page eight, on uh, paragraph nine, section three is. Uh, thou shalt uh, give W twos. Th- thou whatever. shalt not talk about the pastor. Thou shalt not the pastor. So, so if that's, that's what the, that's what's meant by membership contract, I am totally against that. Yeah, there, there's yeah, some yeah, of those. That's not what I mean. <laughs> um, but no, like just a, a covenant, overall agreement, or whatever like that. I got no problem with it at all. But a lot of the time, it's more like make sure you you know on that on that fifth thirtieth, you breaking us off. Right. More than anything else. So sure, sure, sure. Donovan asks, how do you feel about those who just go online and think that's okay? Online church, Jason. What are your thoughts? Uh, why? Okay, let me ask a quick question. Why are you going online? Is it because I, I, I don't see a good reason why you would do that? But what what is your for why you're going online? I think you should, on Sunday or on the Lord's Day, go and be with other believers. Um, I understand what happened during 2020 <laughs> and 2020 and some places 2022, but I understand that there's no good reason. If you're an able body person, you have means of transportation. There's no reason not to sick and shut in. If you're an invalid, that's not who we're talking about. We're talking about those who are able body and can, I think they should be in the, in the on Sunday with other believers worshiping the Lord. Exactly. Um, like, yeah, are you are you terminally ill? Like, what's the reason for only watching online? Like, if you're if you're healthy, there's no reason. Then I would say, I would argue that person is uh, being disobedient. I mean, yeah. Hebrews twenty five yep. says, "Do not neglect to meet together, as is the habit of some." Right? right. So, don't do that. So, online church YouTube video is not a replacement for the local assembly. This oh. we we ain't having church right now. You can be encouraged, edified, but this is not your local church. <laughs> do not use all things the okay, no, my pastor. No, I'm not. You know what I have to tell that person? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe something like this. Boy ain't no way, boy. Boy ain't no way, boy. What? <laughs> Bro, what are you talking yes, about? Yes, no, this is not your church, no. not your replacement. Right? Uh, let's see. What about this question? Can you see this question here? Uh, um from person. Person asks. Okay, but what if your husband works Sundays and you are awkward and going to a new church is just socially hard for you? I read my Bible daily and watch sermons weekly. This doesn't sound like a what if question. This sounds like a... <laughs> <All right. laughs> but. Okay, and, and I understand. I'm not... I, I'm an extra. I will walk in the... I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I'll just go. I, I, I like meeting people. So I, that's not a problem necessarily have. So I do understand that I have to be empathetic to those who are maybe not as outward going, like myself and my are extremely outgoing. My wife panics a lot of the time. We go places and we like play games, like let's go see if we can meet 10 people go, and that kind of stuff. So we, we don't meet strangers, but I'm pathetic to the fact that others do have that, um, that, that problem. I would say church a priority. If, if husband cannot go, is it possible that a friend can come with y'all? Like, hey, let me bring Sally with us, um, our neighbor. Let's go together. And at least so you become comfortable. And try to meet 
somebody who can go with, I mean, somebody who, like a pastor or church leader as quickly as you can and kind of schedule a meeting, talk them, and so you can kind of gain a better, hopefully, a little understanding, a little bit more ease and the such like that. So that was immediate response to that. What do you think? Yeah. And, and I would say, look, I, I empathize with you person. I don't know if you're a male or female, uh, but I, I empathize with you uh, that this is one of your idiosyncrasies, right? Your, your, you know, maybe personal things about yourself that may be difficult. But I would say this, I would, I argue everybody in the church has little idiosyncrasies about themselves that make them possibly awkward, right? Um, you know, but I would say, look, go to church and be sanctified in your awkwardness, right? Uh, grow in that area. But I don't think the solution to your awkwardness and, you know, you know, social sociable hardness is to miss church, right? And I would pray for your husband, you know, even appeal to your husband that church is important biblically mm-hmm. to that you guys should be going together as a family. So first off, that probably is the first thing, speaking to your husband. Uh, oh, well, obviously you're a female since your husband, right? So now my bad for saying that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, speak to your husband and appeal to him if he can get another job or a different shift. I, I don't know your situations, but it's important enough for that. Find a church that meets earlier or later. You know, there's different circumstances that can be worked around. But as far as the awkwardness, um, pray, right? Pray, Lord, help me to be more, um, do the one another's with other saints that you have called into the body. I'll tell you this, 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 this shocks some people when I say this, but I personally, like if I have my, like just personally, I, I'm a, I'm a homebody. I don't like going out. I don't like being around a lot of people, but man, it's something about being around the saints that man encourages me. And I'm like, Hey, I, I can kind of get out of my quote unquote comfort zone. You know what I mean? And sure. so hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Jay asked a great question. She says, is there a problem with visiting different churches? Cause the church you really like is too far. Is that better than not going at all? I, I would say this, I say this. I think it's important to hear the consistent teaching of the word of God. So I advocate for going to the same church and going there and not just jumping around and visiting church. You you, you don't see that consistency. You don't meet with the consistent people and things like that. Right. Right. So my opinion. Okay. Let's just say just for, just to be, uh, try to give a little bit of a a different situation. Let's say it was really the, the, the church that she really likes and really feels comfortable with is far away. And it is a task to get there every week. Got you. And if there's a maybe a church, maybe like the, the best church is a 10. The church that's closer to you might be a, a six. Okay. If you went to the six once, I'm not mad at you, but I would make much of an effort to try to get to that 10, even if, me, even if it means maybe we need to move, maybe we need to find a consistent mode of transportation. I, I'm going to give you a little bit of grace. But recognizing that the the thing, the most pressing thing out of four Sundays of the month, getting out here to this 10 church that, and if it's just, I can't get the car going, whatever, I'm going to go to the six, That's but right. I will make it with you. I'm agreeing with you. The, the effort, the intent, the desire is to get to the church to be consistent because also there's another thing that I think we're missing is that they themselves are not learning. There's an opportunity for the church community to be a blessing to you. But you're missing. You're you're actually shortchanging them on the opportunity to be a blessing to you right. by not being. So and, and them not knowing this this family has a car need, or this family has a transportation. So they they don't know it because you don't come, right. show it, or talk to anybody, or make it known. So the the opportunity, the blessing, one and otherings, because the one and othering ways. So their opportunity to be a blessing to you and you being a blessing to them it happens because they're there. That's so. Right. That's right. I know we still got some more questions, but I, we aren't gonna have to wrap it up. But if y'all could, if you still have questions, put them in the comment section, and we will oh, yeah. we go, we gonna we gonna work through and answer some of these questions. Man, I, I totally enjoy this, uh, Jason. Man, thank you for coming on. Man, it was truly a blessing. <laughs> truly I a blessing. It. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll hey we'll have to do a part two. It seems we'll have to do a part two because it seems like. Uh, many people want to know more about the church and how to find a church and be in a church and some practical applications of church and things like that. And so 
Thank you guys for watching today. It's another episode of All Things Theology. Till the next time, grace and peace.